All right, now to a story here that actually um, my friend to the right has covered uh, before it became uh, as common uh, knowledge recently, and that is some of the scary stuff going on in Europe and in other parts of the world, but in Eastern Europe primarily, and now parts of Western Europe. We have elections for European Parliament that kicked off earlier this week, and after four days of voting across nearly 30 countries, voters in Greece, Denmark, France, elected neo-Nazis, racist, and xenophobes, okay? Um, I, I want to save time instead of more of the background around this, but now there's conversations, and there's different levels. They can't all be put in one bucket. But basically, the far-rightist element of this is getting, trying to put a coalition together, and the numbers they're getting at the polls aren't a half of a Let, percent or something. Let's distinguish between conservative and very conservative and some of these movements so that are ne yep. neo-Nazi. That distinction matters here. Jobbik in Hungary, the right sector in Ukraine, uh, the National Front, the, the, they stand for stuff that is off the political spectrum. And they got votes. And for those of us who've been saying these movements are going mainstream, it's happening. Uh, for America, Nazis are Hogan's heroes. They're funny, bumbling incompetence. It's not true. This stuff has to be talked about for what it is. You should put that show back on <laughs> that, w that you did that was such a, good, a great piece about what's going on in Lithuania and let people see that this is a, a replay of the 30s and we got to stop it. We're not hyping something either. This is real. And now even the groups that may not go as far as the neo-Nazis, they're talking about for political strength, like any political organizations, to do in effect consortiums and to basically unify these parties so they'll have more leverage across Europe. And that's got some scary consequences when you had a bad economy historically. Who do they blame? We're seeing history in, in small ways repeat itself, and we've got to be careful, right? It's, it's worse than America thinks, and it's, and it's time for a, a serious look at what it means to be a Nazi in 2014, not just what it meant to be uh, Hogan's heroes in 1944. We see this, I mean, Le Pen in France, while certainly not as extreme as some of the other groups here, it's interesting, Andrew, because we've talked about the math in terms of unemployment rates, um, really, mm -hmm. Western Europe, old Europe, if you will, going through huge economic troubles right now, and how that's manifesting at the ballot box, and even in some of these scenes, it's bad just... E bad economies always historically and even today lead to disaffected people. Disaffected people lead to hatred and an embrace of hatred. We see that to a certain degree in our own politics, but you start to get these underlying pockets of, of hatred, these underlying themes that have never gone away in parts of Europe, and that's what we're seeing coming through again. Um, and as I said, um, if you uh, minimize this, I think we do this at our own peril. Okay, we're going to wrap things up after this. We'll be right back.